תק הראש, בוקר אור, שבוע טוב, מסכת בבא קמא, דף קט"ו, עמוד א', 115A1, we are three lines down, the two dots. So it says as follows, איתמר, it was stated, גנב ומחר, ואחר כך הוא קרא גנב. And it was stated in the Beit HaMidrash that if somebody steals כלים, he steals utensils, and then what happens is he sells them. So now they find it in the hands of the buyer. So the buyer, but now he doesn't know anything what's going on. Yeah, and afterwards they find out who is the Ganav. So Rav Mishmed Rabhi Amar, Rav in the name of Rabhi Akam, and he says, Hadin Manishon, which means the deen that he does with Ba'alim, to ask for the, the Kelim, is with the first one, right? With the Ganav. What does that mean? The Ba'alim do not have any Tviya. They cannot come and demand anything from the buyer, but only from the Ganav. So therefore, if the Ba'alim want to take the Kelim from the buyer, right? So therefore, he has to actually pay, right? The Kone Ba'avuram, he has to actually pay for it. Now, even though it was Ukara Ganav, nevertheless, the owners cannot come and take it without payment. They have to pay, and then they're going to take the payment from the Ganav. Which only makes sense, you know what I'm saying? So for example, I come, right? I buy something. I had no idea it was stolen. All of a sudden, I got Ganav, it's mine. So okay, fine. You want it. The truth is, I'm not happy you're taking it away from me. But okay, you want it, fine. But you have to pay. No, it's mine. Well, I'm sorry, I paid. So you have to pay me for it. And then you have to go to the Ganav and start uh, fighting with the Ganav to get your money back. Okay, that's the concept. Okay? So now, according to Rabbi Yochanan Nishmeh de Rabbi Yana, so that was, that was with Rabbi Rav in the name of Rabbi Yana. Now we're talking about Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yana, Hadin Mashani. which means they could be toveyadze from the kone, which means he doesn't even have to pay him. Yeah, he doesn't have to pay him. He comes, he takes the, the utensil, and then the second guy has to go and fight with the ganav, meaning the buyer has to go and fight with the ganav to get back his property, okay? To get back his money, sorry, the money that he just bought it. So says the Gemara, Amar of Yosef, says of Yosef, there's no machloket right between them. Right, locally can lifnei yush. Here we're talking about before yush. That means when Rabbi Yochanan comes and he says that he has, he just takes away from the shani. We're talking about before yush. So adinu meshani. So therefore he comes and he takes it, and then at the end of the day he just takes it back, and then the the buyer has to go and run after the the ganav. And can the case of Rab was lachad yush. So then adinu rishon v'tarvayu it lehu the Rav Chis the Rav Chastan. Both of them hold. Of Rav Chasta, that if he sold, that means if the Ganav comes and he sells the Ganeva before Yush, so the Be'alim can actually come and do the, the Dini Makone, and therefore it comes out, the Rav also passes, meaning we're saying there's no Machloket here. There's no Machloket between Rav in the name of Rav Chia or Rav Yochan in the name of Rav Yonai. It all depends if there was Yush or not. If there was Yush, so then, no, basically what happens is he has to actually pay to the second guy and the second guy has to come, and if there was no Yush, he just takes it away from the second guy, the buyer, And then the buyer has to go fight with the Ganav in order to get back the money that he paid. So Amale Abaye, Abaye now comes and he tells Rav Yosef, Velo Plige, are you going to tell me there's no, there's no machloket here? Ha matanot kiuna. What about matanot kiuna? Yeah, what does that mean? We know there's a concept of matanot kiuna. These are things that, presents that go to the Kuanim. And it was sold to a Zar. Meaning, instead of being given to the Kohen, It was sold to a non-Kohen. Azar is a stranger, right? But here it just means a non-Kohen. So it was sold to a non-Kohen. So Kalifne Yush Dami. Obviously, this is considered before Yush. Uplige, and it's the same machloket. Meaning you just put an, an assumption. The assumption is, is that Ke'ilu, right? You're assuming, right? The what? That um, you're coming and you're assuming that it's barur, it's simple, or it's, or it's obvious Right, that this is the halakha that we're talking about. One second. Here, it's, it, it is before Yush. And there's still going to be a machloka between, right, Rav and uh, Rabbi Yochanan. Okay? Uplige, there's still a machloka. The term is we learned to the Mishnah. Amar lo, a person comes, a person comes to the tabah, to a butcher. And he tells him, mecholi mea, sell me the innards. Right, this is the in, intestines, I think they say in English, no? Intestines. Intestines, intestines yeah? Right, of the para, of this para. So he says, "Vayu ba'in matanot." They had matanot kiuna there, which is basically the keva. The keva. How do you say keva in English? Ma. M A W. M A W. The ma. 
Yeah, the stomach. So the maw belongs to the... The maw is this part. Okay. No, the keba is not that. It's not the main. Look at the jaw. Well, no, it's part of the gifts. I mean, apparently that's. Uh... Okay, so basically, it had. It... They said the, the lower jaw. Right, the lower jaw. And, and and the mo M A W M A W. Okay, and what's the mo? The, 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 the mo or Abu Masu, the last. Ah, so the ma is the bomber suit. That means that's the stomach then. Yes. Oh, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Okay, so that's what you I just thought said. the ma was this. No, no, no. So then that's okay. what makes sense. Okay, so that's what it is then. Exactly. Okay, fine. So the, the M-A-W. Yeah. Okay, so here he oh, comes okay. and he says like this. Okay. So. Yeah, I, didn't right? I didn't understand it. So explain it, please. Um, Actually, it could mean both. Here it says, if you look in the English dictionary, ma, is either the mouth, throat, or gullet of an animal. Right. And then he says here, number three, though, is the stomach, especially that of an animal. Oh. So, okay, so the mall, here we're talking about the mall, which is the stomach, because in Hebrew, keva is the stomach area of the of the animal. So that's the keva. So that means, again, he gave to the kohen. That means he, he basically sold it's to the stranger. To to he me. gave him part of the stomach, which basically goes to the kohen. So not to know the kohen. So basically the purchaser has to give it to the kohen. Now, he cannot actually, the tabakh does not have to come and, and to take down the price from that which he did, because since he knew at the time that it was part of it, so therefore you cannot take it, meaning like this, I come to the butcher, I tell him, okay, give me all the innards, mm -hmm. right? And then he comes and he gives him everything. Now, at the end, this purchaser has to give that part to the kohen, and he can't come back to the to the seller, to the tabakh, to the butcher, and tell him, by the way, take down the price, because I have to give it to the kohen. No, you already knew that there was there. And the fact that you already knew it was there and that goes to the Kohen, so automatically it was there. That's it. Well, here it says it's written. The place. Yes, but here it says Tabach. Here it says Tabach. Yes. Amalo la Tabach. I mean, Kore Beivrit. Yeah? Yeah? So he says like this. So la Kach Emenu. Right? Katuv lecha shabbat. Tindor. Katuv lecha. So if right now he purchases a bimishkal, which means with weight, not to kohen, So now if it is going to be with weight, that's going to be a little bit different. Right there, he does have to actually give it to the kohen, but he's going to deduct the money. Now, why? Because basically you cannot include the weight, right? Knowing that that's not the real, real weight, right? Meaning that you have to actually, you, have, you have to pay attention to that. You already know that it's not true. The Amar Rav, now Rav Shamlina says, Lo Shanu, what are we dealing with? If he came and he waited himself, but if it was right now the tabach that came and he did that, right? So that means he was the one that actually came. So it comes out that the tabach was the one that stole the keba. So then adinim tabach. So then he could only get the money from right the tabach and not from anybody else. Okay. So if you wanted to take it from the purchaser, you can't do that. Basically, that means basically. So the kohen is running after now the keba, and now the kohen is getting the money from who? Is he getting it from the purchaser or is he getting it from the tabakh, from the guy, from the butcher? Okay. So here though, right? Did you realize though that here we're coming and we're saying. Depends who weighs it. That it depends who's weighing it. Okay. And this is all before the yush, obviously. So says the Gemara, Eima, if you want, you could answer af dini matabach. Right? The din is also with the tabakh. What does that mean now? That means the Kohen could come to the tabakh also. In any case. So ma'u the tema ema tonot keuna nigzalot. Because I would have had a hava mina, the bini bemet, these matanot, it's not shayach to steal it. Okay, because it's always considered the, the property of the coins. You can't even steal it. So even if it is going to take it, it always belongs to the coin. Hamash Blanc comes to teach you, the Rav is coming to teach you, no, that even Avera Matanot Keunat to Acher is considered Gezela, and therefore when the Kohen is going to come and he's going to ask for it, Right, not only sue is, both of them. Yes, exactly. He could sue both because basically it is considered stolen. That means even though that means the havamina was is that it's never considered stolen because it always has the name that it's supposed to go to a coin. Right. The kamash malana is no, it is considered stolen, and therefore he could come to either or right to collect it. Okay. Does that not make the use the coin? No. plige So according to right again, according to Abaye that he said that there's going to be a machlok between Rav and Rabbi Yochanan. What is the Machloket? The Machloket is in Rav Chasta that he holds that if you come and you eat it before Yush, so therefore he could choose where to collect it from. 
So Rabbi Yochanan actually accepted Rav Chasta, and Rav Nachma, Rav, argued on Rav Chasta. And therefore he says, you can't get it from the purchaser, you could only get it from the Ganav. Okay? So we had until now the Pshat of Rav Yosef, that basically there was no Machloket, one is before Yush, one is after Yush, and everybody goes to Rav Chasta. You have the Shitava Baye, that there is a Machloket between Rav uh, and Rabbi Yochanan, and they're arguing in Rav Chasta, right? That's what basically is going on. Okay, that means basically Rav Chasta, right? About that you always you could you could choose who you're collecting from, and again according to Rav Yochanan, he agrees with Rav Chasta, and according to Rav, he argues on Rav Chasta. And now we're going to the third explanation, Rav Zvid. So Rav Zvid Amar, Rav Zvid comes and he says, Kegon, what's the case exactly? Right? He says Shaniti Ashua Balim Biyad Lokeach. There was Yush, but where's the, where was the Yush done? The Yush was only done Biyad Lokeach. The other lokiah means in the hands of the purchaser, meaning it was done after the sale. After the formal, that's when it was done. It was not done in the hands of the ganav. So what is the machlok then? More savad yush v'achakach shinui l'shut kani. Right? Shinui l'shut v'achakach yush lo kani. More savad lo shna. Which means this. We know that you need two different things to acquire, to make an acquisition. You need yush, which is giving up hope. And you need shinui l'shut, change of ownership. Now, the question is, does it matter the order? Does it matter the order? So therefore, right, Rabbi Yochanan comes and he says that you always need the Yush and then Shinui Rishut. So you first have to give up the hope, which has to be in the hands of the Ganav, obviously, of the stealer, the, right, the person that stole, and then Shinui Rishut. But if you do it the other way around, which means that first you're going to have the Shinui Rishut and only afterwards the Yush, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why? You never actually acquire it. And therefore, that's why, according to him, he could actually come, right? And he could take it from the Lokeach because the Lokeach never actually purchased it, right? Because it was it was the wrong way around. But according to Rav, he holds that there's no difference in the order. And once there's no difference in the order, according to him, they could not come and take it back from the Lokeach, from the purchaser. You could only take it back from the Ganav. That is the third shita of how to explain the Machloke between Rav and Rav Yochanan. Fourth explanation. Until here, we're clear, yeah? Yeah? Fourth explanation. Rav Papa. So Rav Papa comes and he says, really, we're talking about there was no Yush. We're talking about, except for a, a glima, like a, a coat, right? Like an external garment. That there's no machloket that you have to actually come, right? About the actual, you know, that, you, that according to Rav and Rav Yochanan, you have to give it back to the to the owners. Okay? That means, basically what Rav Papa is saying is, Rav and Rabbi Yochanan are not arguing to do the Tvi of the Baalim. If he could be Tovia, i from the Lokeach and not from the Ganav, they both hold the Rav Hasta, And they could actually go and take it from the Lokeach. Right? Because it's still his. So he cannot just be Miakev the Chefetz and just come and, the question is, he cannot be Miakev the Chefetz until he gets the money back. So he says, "Vehacha beasubo takanat ashuk kamipalgev." But here the machloket is takanat ashuk. What does that mean exactly, takanat ashuk? Which means after he comes and he gives the coat to the owners, can he still come and and take the money from the owners, or only from the ganav? Meaning like this. One more time. Beforehand, we were actually speaking about can he actually come and uh, can the owners take it back? Does he go take it back from the? Lokeach, does it, the purchaser, does he take it back from the Ganav? What's going on? Can he only take the money? Here we're talking about a glima. A glima, according to everybody, goes straight back to the to the owners. Now the only question is, okay, fine. So now he comes, he gives it back. Now the question is, the, this, this purchaser, what does he do now? Can he come and tell the owners, listen, you took it away from me, I gave it to you, but now you have to pay, right? And you go deal with the Ganav. Or can he only go straight to the Ganav? That's the question. That is what Rav Papa is coming and saying. It's called Takanat Ashuk Pamipalge. Rav Mishmed Rebchi Amar Hadin Imarishon. What does that mean? The Din of the Lokeach is right with the Ganav and not with the owners. So Din of the Lokeach Tilish Kol Zuzeh Biganav, which means the Din of Lokeach is he only could take it from the Ganav. And the reason why the Chachamim they didn't do Takanat Ashuk, right? And that means here, right, is because Chachamim did not make Takanat Ashuk. So since he didn't make Takanat Ashuk, so therefore he loses out. So the purchaser loses out. Rabbi Yochanan says, 
It's actually with the second one. The dina de lokeach de lishkol mi balabait. And therefore the dina of the lokeach is that he's going to take it from the balabait. Asu takanat ashuk. They did the takanat ashuk. Which means that they actually did takanat ashuk that they didn't want to come and make problems in the shuk. Because if not, nobody would actually come and start buying things. Right nowadays, by the way, I, if I remember correctly, I think there's an insurance on this. I think it's called title insurance. But just in case something happens and then there was a lien, didn't know about it. But imagine, you come, you spend a fortune in a house, and then you realize it's a lien on some bank in I don't know where. You know what I'm saying? You just lost all your money. Now go start looking for the guy, trying to get it back, this and that. It's a balagan. So they made a concept of takanata shuk. So the makhluk at here is, do they have takanata shuk or not? So for example, here you're right. I have to give it back. So the, there's no question about giving back the object. I mean, I can't just say, listen, I bought it. Fine, you, it's yours. Take the money. No, 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 no. I have to give back the object. So the object I have to give back. There's nobody who's arguing with that. But the only question is, did they do takanata shuk or not? Which means, can I go, go now and come and tell the guy, listen, I'm giving it back to you or pay up. Or do I say, no, they didn't do takanata shuk, so I can't even go to the guy. I have to go look for the ganav and go go to the ganav and get it from the ganav. Okay? That's the makhluk between them. So ask the Gimara on this, the savar rav, rav holds no asuku takanata shuk, they didn't do takanata shuk. He says, Vaha, Ravuna, de Ravava. Ravuna is a student of Rav. Right? That's why many times you have a Ravuna and a Rav. Rav, which means that Ravuna says the name of Rav, meaning he was, he was a student. So Ravuna was a Tamid of Rav. The Hanan Bisha, and there was a story with Hanan, Hara. Right? Bisha is like Mishnah Bisha, right? Lashon Ra. So the Hanan, the, the Ra. Ganav Glima Vizamna. So it's very interesting. This was his nickname. His nickname was Hanan Ra. Okay, so it says he stole a glima, the zamna he stole it. So Ata the guy came in front of Ravuna, and he told the Gavra zil shari avetach, right? Give the mashkon that you have in your hand, which means right, you have to come and you have to pay him, right? If you want to take the glima, so therefore it comes out that even if it's hukara ganav, the talmid of Rav went and he said the balim have to pay for it. Why? Takanat shuk. So if Ravuna is a student of Rav, and Ravuna comes and he says, yes, he could take back his Galima, but he has to pay. So it comes out that Ravuna, that Rav, also agrees to Takanat Ashuk. So answers the Gemara, Shane Hanan Bisha, He says, no. forced. He says that, listen, this guy, Hanan Bisha, he had nothing whatever to take out from him. Which means that, okay, here, he always used to, he always used to make it in a way here he brings down a Gemara and Namid Zayin Mudalif. How did he do it in a place where the Bedim would never be able to, able to take out money from him? So ever since they were never able to take it out from money from him, so therefore, either he never had Nechassim. And he was very, very smart. He was like a fugitive that he never had property. So there was never, he, he, was, he was always living on cash. Plenty right? guys, he always guys, had, plenty guys, he always had the suitcases, yeah? You know listening, yeah? He always had the suitcases. He never had, he never had a property. Now, why was that so good? It was incredible because nobody could ever do anything against him. Because you can't grab away from him the Talitani, movable objects, only property. So here, if he never has property, he would steal. And then even if they would catch him and come back, you can't do anything. What are you going to do? Yeah? Uh, it's all, it's all uh, how do you call it? Liquid. There's nothing there. Yeah? So therefore, it was considered like it was never Ukara Ganav. And that's why they did such a thing. Okay? So fine. Amar Rav, Rav come and he says, there was another time that we don't do Takanat Ashuk. Either, if you remember, we don't do Takanat Ashuk in the case where it was, right, low kara ganav, and therefore, obviously, he would have to pay for it, meaning that the Balim have to pay for it, because if you don't know who the ganav is, they obviously have to pay for it. Number two, also, if it's a ganav mefursam, the same thing, they didn't do Takanat Ashuk, right? Why? Because basically, since he knows that you're buying it from a ganav, so that you shouldn't have bought it from in the beginning. I mean, you know that this guy is a mafianer. So you already know that everything the guy has is stolen. So for what are you doing? Now what are you coming and buying from him? Doesn't make sense. One second. Hanan Bisha was mefursam. They did do takanat ashuk. So he says he was known to be a rasha. He wasn't known to be a ganav. Yeah, it's a little forced for me. Why? There are people which are rishayim, but they're not ganavim. You never do that. You could have a guy that he's a wicked guy. He's not nice. He's very audacity. He's a but he's not known to be a thief, right? And uh, but he did steal this. You know how it is. Sometimes it comes out. 
By the way, Richard, it does happen. You have certain people that it depends on the circumstances. For them, they could be, you know, I don't know what. And then uh, it, it all depends on circumstances. So we just learned in the last couple of days, if you cheat on your taxes, you... you, you... So it says now the Gemara as follows. Each money was stated. Ganav ufara bechovo. Right? Ganav ufara bekefo. Lo asubu takanat ashuk. If a person comes and he stole a chefetz and then he paid down his debt with it, or he stole an object and he paid, right, like with credit, the baalim that take it, they do not do, right, without any payment. The reason why is because the amri, because they could say, right, not on, I'm going to come and take these things which are stolen, you gave me. In a sense, so therefore we didn't do takanat also in such a case. That means whether it's the malve, which is the lender, accepted the, the chefetz from the ganav, like as it says, as a, as a payment, or he accepted, or the storekeeper that accepted it like on credit, they have to give back the the geneva, right? Because obviously we're talking about without yush and everything. Now, does he have to actually pay or not? So say no. Why? Because they could just say, listen, right? The takanat shuk was done to somebody that's giving money. Okay? And he thinks about it. And then afterwards, it was it found out, no, 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 it's not his. But he says, in these cases, the malver, the chenveni, whichever one was, he didn't lend it on to get this object. So therefore, he actually lent him the money before getting any on the object. So therefore, there was no takanat ashuk in this case as well. Okay? Mashkanta shavi matan bemea. Somebody that accepts an object, which is worth 200 zoos, and he accepted it like a mashkon on something which is 100 zoos. And then it found out that it was stolen. So that's why the guy gave it to him. You know, saying he didn't care, even though it was worth double. Asubo takanat ashuk, they did do takanat ashuk to give it back. Right, remember the concept of takanat ashuk is basically that he comes and now he has to he gets the money back from the bali from the owners. Shavebe shavebe, but if it was the same amount of money, meaning the exact same as the value, a meimar says lo asubu takanat ashuk. Makes good sense. Right, it makes sense. Yeah, but the meimar comes and he says they didn't do takanat ashuk because since it's not normal to lend out on something which is exactly the same value, right? So there's if somebody the, offers to sell you a TV for hundred dollars, you better you know you have a problem. Yes, and Morzutra comes and he says asubu takanat ashuk. Right, okay, fine. Zivina, shave be shave. If you come and it's going to be sold exactly at that amount, so they made takanat ashuk. But if it's going to be shave mea be matan, so they didn't do the takanat ashuk. Okay? Rav Sheshat comes and he says, that was just what Richard said, the 100 for 200. Right? Rav Sheshat comes and he says, lo asubo takanat ashuk, they didn't do takanat ashuk. Rav comes and he says, asubo takanat ashuk. Behichada bekulu, what's alachai in all these cases? Asubo takanat ashuk, they did do takanat ashuk, except for levar, from the Ganav and Pura Bechovo, or Ganav and Pura Bechovo, meaning in those two cases, that he basically stole, and then he paid off his debt, or he stole, and he wanted to make a credit in a store, those are the only two cases where they didn't do Takanat Hashuk. But other than that, <clears throat> they do do Takanat Hashuk. Okay, so that means even in the cases of the 100 for 200, or 100 and 100, and all those things, they do do Takanat Hashuk. Okay, a story. Avime Barnazi. Chamuad Ravina. So Avim Ravnazi was a father of Ravina. He had four zoos that way he lent to this guy. So the guy came, he stole a glima, and he brought it to Avimi. Now with this, what happened was, is that he actually borrowed, now he didn't know it was stolen, so he actually borrowed another four zoos. Right? That means basically what happened was, right, um, Ah, okay, so basically what happened was that he wanted to borrow more money, so he basically stole the glima, he gave it to him, and this was a collateral to get another four. Okay? So what happened? At the end, they found out about the ganav. So they came in front of Ravina. Now remember, this is his father-in-law, right? So Amar Kamei, so said Ravina, right? Kamei, the first four zoos, ganavu para bechovo. It's considered that he stole and he paid back his debt. So therefore the Baalim do not have to give him anything for it. But the next four, you, have, you could take the glima, but you have to pay for it. So basically, he was dividing between the two different fours. One more time. A guy came and he borrowed four zoos. He wanted to take another, another borrow. Uh, he wanted to borrow more money. He didn't let. So he comes, he steals a glima, and he gave it to him. And he tells him, you see, I paid you back for the four. Give me another four. So he comes and he says, he lent him the other four. Now, the guy didn't know who was stolen. So now when they actually found out that it was stolen, what happened was the Ravina comes and he says, listen, the first four was Ganavu Parachovo. He stole and he paid off his debt. In such a case, there's no Takanat Hashuk. The second four was okay. So therefore you do do Takanat Hashuk. So he comes and he says, so therefore all he has to do is he has, the, the Balin could take their Glima, but they have to pay four Zeus. Okay? So Mat Kifla, 
Rav Kohen, Rav Kohen comes and he asks the following question, right? Interesting name, no? Rav Kohen. He says, one second, maybe I'm going to say that the Love came and he gave the Glima to Avime only for the first four Zuz. And the second, right? The Me'azva Zu, according to everybody, you cannot get, right? Right? He comes and he says, one second, one second, one second. What are you trying to say? The first four, according to everybody, you cannot collect. But that's ganav upara bechodo. You stole me, you paid back your debt. That we said, according to everybody, there's no takana to shuk. It's according to everybody. But the next four, why are you coming and telling me the next four he has to pay and there is takana to shuk? Maybe my mentor was all based on the emuna, on belief. Just like the fourth, first four he lent him and he didn't have a collateral. So to here, he's lending him. Not because of that glima, not because of the collateral. He, did, he lent it without there. So if, if he lent it without, so for again, they could just take it. Right? There's no takana to or not. Right? So he says, he should be able to come. And therefore he says, uh, therefore he comes and he says, right? And just like they believed him in the beginning. So therefore you could say that this story is actually going to be something different. That he borrowed it. So for that was the second one as well. So according to that, it's nothing to do with the glima, nothing to do with the second sale. Now, if the glima has nothing to do with the second sale, so he doesn't have to pay for it. So they just take the glima. So So after this, Rav Kohen comes and he asks the question against Ravina. He came in front of Rabbi Avru. And he says, That means basically since the guy gave the imun, the belief in, the, in this guy the first time around, he trusted him. He trusted him. So too, the belief was in the second time around, and therefore he cannot even collect the four zoos on the second loan. Nothing. Yeah, means the guy lost out completely. Okay, next, another story. So there was a person from the, the city of Narash. That's called Narsha'a. I mean, it's like, you know, a guy, uh, I don't know, there's no, you don't say a guy. Miami. Miami. Yeah, they, they say it. Miami. 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 Okay. So this Miami, right? So he comes and he, and he, what happened was, is this guy was from Nansha'a. So this guy came and he stole a sefer and he sold it for 80 zoos to a person from Papunya, right? From Papuna, okay? So Azal Papuna, the guy from Papuna came and he sold it to So these guys know how to do business. The guy comes and he sells it. He sold it for 80. The second guy, that meaning this guy that sold it, bought it for 80, he went and he sold it to 120, to somebody of Bar Mechuza. Okay, Lesovu Kara Ganav. Then they found out the Ganav. Amara Bayabaye says, and this is what uh, the doctor was talking about before, when they come and there's so many intermediaries in the middle. So Amara Bayabaye says, Lizul Mare de Sifra, Viav Lei, Le Bar Mechuza, Teman and Zuvi Shakri Sifre. All he has to do is give, give him 80 and take it back. Then, Ve'azil Bar Mechuza, Veshakra Bahimi Puna, then he's going to take 40. From the Bar Pepuna. You understand? One more time. The Ganav came and he stole. So obviously he didn't pay a penny. He sold it for 80 Zuz. This guy that sold it, that bought it for 80, sold it to 120. So the owners come to the guy that bought it for 120. They give him 80. Whoa. Only 80, not 120. And then this guy that bought it for 120 go back to the seller in the middle and he gets the 40. Capish? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So Matki Flarava Rava Rava comes and he asks the following question. He says, Hashta Lokiach, right? He comes and he says, Yes, Hashta Lokiach mi Ganava Subot Akanata Shuk. Lokiach mi Lokiach mi Bae. He says, I don't understand. If right now you already made Takanata Shuk for Lokiach mi Ganav, so Lokiach mi Lokiach, for sure you should make, make Takanata Shuk. Right? Obviously. So he says, Alam Rava, brother Rava says, Lazy Mara de Sifra Vele Marmachazam have a sin, Zuze. Says no, really, by it's not like that. It shouldn't be like that. What should you do, really? You should pay 120 to the guy that paid 120. And is that you have to pay 120, right? That's what he's trying to say. He has to give the a string, right? Now the bala sefer is going to go to the ben mechuza. He has to pay him 120. And then Mare de Sifra is going to go, right, and take 40, right, from the Papuna mm -hmm. and 80 from the Narsha. Meaning, one more time, what happened? 
the previous salacha was, the previous one, right, which the psak, what they gave was, was a bay. Now Rabbah's arguing with a bay. A bay comes and he says, I'm the owner, right? Everyone remember, I'm the owner. How much do I have to pay out of pocket? I only have to pay 80. So I come to the second guy, I pay him 80. And after coming and paying him 80, right, what happens is, right, the, this guy that paid 120 collects the 40 from the first guy. If he can find him and if he can get the money out of him. Yes, exactly. Okay, fine. According to this shita, no. According to this shita, I'm the owner, I have to pay the 120. How much did you pay? 120, I have to pay you 120. You know why? It's like a palva homer. It's interesting. Yes, he says, basically, it's the one who buys directly from the thief. So then you do takanata shuk. So all the more so if you're buying it from a buyer, that you have to do takanata shuk. Because so you have no direct right? dealings with a thief. With a thief. So therefore, you have to pay him the 120. Okay, so the baalim have to pay 120. I'm the baalim. I have to now collect uh, 80, right, from the second guy and 40 from the first guy. Not uh, right, that, that's what we're basically doing. Okay, fine. Mishnah. Mishnah on the bottom, Kutu Dvav Mudal. Right, Zeba Bachavito Shagai, Mizaba Bekadosh Shel Dvash, Nistika Chavit Shel Dvash, the Shafak Zet Yeno, the Itzila Dvash at Tuchos. If you remember, we're talking about the different Takanot. Institutions. So, for wine. example, the honey and the wine. So, I've got a barrel of honey. He's got the wine. The wine breaks. After the wine breaks, I come. I spill out. Uh, sorry, sorry. The the the, 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 dvash. the um, honey yeah. breaks. I spill out my wine, which is inferior in, in price, meaning it has a lower price. And then I come and I collect this dvash. But then I want to. I want to. I have to. I, I, I lost my wine, so I want to collect it from him. So that's what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> so, and you're able to do that. So he comes and he says on kuftetvav mubet. 115b, no, in this case, he only has his reward, which is this, the the schar of the chavit and the peula, meaning he does not have to pay for the wine. He has to pay for like renting out my my chavit and for the, but that's it. But if he said, I could save yours, but you have to pay mine. So then he's another, another case. I thought that we said that we made the takana the other way around, but okay, I guess we have to see the Gemara. So another case, second case, Shataf Nachal Chamoro Vechamor Chavero, right? So the Nachal came and it starts, it pushed, right? The, the Nachal, the river started pushing his Chamor and his friend's Chamor. Now his Chamor is worth 100 and the friend's Chamor is worth 200. So he comes and he says, listen, why am I going to sell, save mine, which is only worth 100? I'm going to save my friend's, which is worth 200. So he says, he only gets his wages, right? But if he told them, I'm going to save yours and that you have to pay mine, so then he's allowed to do that. He's obligated to come and pay, right? The thing. So same thing with saving, any type of a saving, okay? That's the concept. Says the Gemara, okay? Why? Why is it that the wine guy only has his reward? He should come and say, I was Zoche from Efker. Meaning, where was the honey going? It was getting lost. So when I come and I pour out my wine and I pick up the dvash, that dvash is not mine. Because that dvash was going to be destroyed. It's going to go to the garbage. I saved it. It should go to me. So I was zokheh from Efker. So says the Gemara, Milo Tanya, didn't we learn? Right? Imagine right now, a guy wants to play a good one, right? A good trick. He's walking and he realizes, uh oh, his barrel is going to break. So what does he say? Right away he comes and he says, this barrel's truma on that which I have in my house. And then what happens? It breaks. Right. The truma broke. So I say, okay, but it was truma. Tell the Kohanim, <laughs> go lick it from the floor. Yeah, what the, go tell the Kohanim, go, go get it. You don't do that. Why? If you did that, you didn't do anything. It's kulum, it's nothing. So answers the Gemara, Kedam Rav Yirmiya, Rav Yirmiya comes and he says, Kishakal betabad karach he says the Braita is talking about in a case where it's stopping him that it should pour out in one shot. So Achanami, so to hear, right? Our Mishnah is talking about Kishekel Betabad Karachale, which means that the Dvash is not going to be poured out in one shot, but it's going out drop by drop. So therefore, since you could save it, it's not considered Efket. Meaning, if it's going to be the entire thing is going to pour out in one second, it's considered Efket, because you can't save it. But if it's going one drop, tipa, veo tipa, veo tipa, ve so therefore, it's not considered, right, the, that it's not considered if get. So says the Gemara, but if he did say this about the Truma, he didn't say anything. But Tanya, we learned to the Braita, somebody's coming on the path and he has money, 
the anas can go and he finds an anas in front of him. Lo yoman, he shouldn't say that a perot sheish lui bitoch beti necholim al maot olalu. Vimaman, if he says, tfarim kayamin, his words are good. So he's, he's got a thief in front of him. He knows that the thief is going to steal from him. So what does he do? He comes and he says, this is mechulan on this. This becomes ma'aser or whatever it is. And then that's it. I like it. Right? You like it. It's yes, I do. Yeah? Now, why not? So he says, Zacham again, what are we dealing with? He says, with she'achol la'tzil. You could save it from the anas. Meaning, only in a case where you could save the money from the anas, then, then it works if you do such a thing. And that's why it's good. But if not, then no. But then it's considered of ket. So he says, Ibe she'achol la'tzil. So one second, if you could save it from the Ganav, so then Lechatchila, why can't you say it then? Why is it only B'diavad? If you already said it, so then it's going to be okay. Lechatchila say it. So it says, No, you could save it, but it's not 100%. It's a Okay? So the Gemara is going to ask, Why is it only B'diavad? Why is it only B'diavad? Why is it only B'diavad? In any case where there's going to be a said, Lechatchila, no, you're not going to say it. But Tanya, we learned in the right. Aresha, you know, Eser Chaviyot, Shel Tevel, Tame. Imagine right now you have 10, 10 barrels of wine, which is going to be tameh. And you found one of them that was going to be broken or nidgasha. Or man, you're going to say, You're going to say it's trumat maser on nine of the chavroteah. But to do with oil, lo second. You're not going to do this. Because of said to the kohen. So it comes out that even though it's going to the bud, right, you have an said. So says the Gemara, Amar Rabbi Yirmiya, Amar Rabbi comes and he says the same answer as we answered before. Which means that it's not going to go out in one shot, it's going drip by drip. Remember, whenever it's going out in one drop, it's considered a fket. And if you say it, it's yours. Here, if it's going drip, drop by drop, you could still save it. So it's not considered, by drop by right? Drop. So Bisham Ajin Shbera, I understand in a case where the Chavit actually broke, that there's not a Chazia, because you could see it. Ela Nidgalta, but if it's right now revealed, what can you do? Remember that any single time that you have something that becomes revealed, right? So therefore, what do you what can you use with it? Remember that mashkin chinit galu, any type of liquid that becomes revealed, you're not allowed to use it. So if you're not allowed to use it because you remember about the snake, snake and everything. Yeah. So because of that, so therefore, what's it gonna help now? Meaning, since we said you're allowed to make the tumat maser, we're not gonna uh, suspect for the loss of the kohen. So he says, so then why is it all of a sudden that you're not going to be mechalel ma'aseh sheni on this money that you could save al yedei adacha? Bechitim, and if you're going to tell me now, chazel is ziluf, you could do ziluf. You remember what ziluf was? In the olden days, the, the floors were made out of dirt. So in order that the dust doesn't come up and you have a nice smell in the house, right, nowadays they put in the AC. Right, they put it like, you understand, nowadays that's what they do. They put spray, and the spray gives off a smell, and that's a kilo. In the olden days, they used to do it on the floor. So for they would pour on the floor of wine that had a good smell. So it says, "Vatanya, you're not allowed to pour it in the rishut arabim, right? Why? Because maybe if somebody could come and they could um, uh, step on it, right? And then what happens is that the poison which is inside of it was remember it was galuis. I mean, since it was revealed, maybe there's poison inside of it. So poison will go through in his in his foot. You're not allowed to come and use it for teeth to make clay to make uh, you know like the cement." You're not allowed to do the butzah by. You're not allowed to give it to the, to the friends, your friend's animal, right, or to your animal. So it comes out that you're not allowed to do ziluf with with wine or anything which was revealed. So if it's revealed, come on, there's nothing what to talk about. So answers the Gemara. You put in a misanet, which means that you put in a sieve, and therefore you're able to see if it has poison or not. Like Rav Nechemia, the Tanya was learned to write a misanet. Yeshva mishum gilui, right? Which means that if you come and you put it, there's a problem of the gilui. And Amar Ben Chemi, I'm a type. Bizman shatachtona megule. Only if the bottom one is going to be revealed, but if the top one is going to be covered, Avo bishan elyonah megule. I'm a mishum wild. If he shares nachash, tomele sfog. It's considered like sfog with tzaf, and it and it um, floats. The omed bimkomo, and it doesn't mix with the wine. So if you're going to put it through a mesanen, it's actually going to separate the poison from the. It doesn't get mixed up with the wine, and therefore it's going to be. Okay, so says the Gemara. Love itman Allah. Didn't we already say? Tamar Rabbi Simon and Rishon Levi. Lo shanu ela shelo terako. That's only if you didn't mix it, right? Aval terako. But if you mix it, it's going to be a sur. Meaning, even after coming and using a mesanenet, it does mix up well when you come and you start mixing. Meaning like this: many, many different times, right? You could have different liquids or different types of forms that they don't mix. But if you come and you actively mix it, it does mix. Yeah. So answers the Gemara. Hatam nami. There also, if shar de manach midi puma de chavita, you could put something on top of the chavit. For example, a beged or misanenet, 
and the shafile, and then you could pour the wine, and it's doing it together. It's misarno benachat. And therefore, even in such a case, again, it's not going to mix. Meaning that even after mixing it, you could still put, have the barrel, put a sieve on the top, which is like, you know, the, 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 the main, and then you're pouring it little by little, and it will also still separate by the two of them. Can you be Torem from Perot Meim on Perot Meim? But Tanya, we learned in the Braita, there's a Tosefta, Tormim mina Tamea la Tame, Umina Tahor la Tahor, Mina Tahor la Tame. Aval lo mina Tamea la Tahor. Reb Nechemia says, even in the Tamea la Tame, lo itiru litrom el ashil demai. Comes out like this. Whenever you're going to come and you're going to separate Trumot, you could only do it, and that's what he's saying over here, you cannot separate, right? Uh, he says like this. You could separate from Tameh to Tameh and Tahor to Tahor, because it's the same thing. I mean, Tameh and Tameh and Tahor and Tahor is the same exact thing. So you could separate one from another, right? Or even on Tahor on Tameh, because then it's something pure for something impure. But he says, but you cannot do it from the Tameh on the Tahor. When Nehemiah comes and he says, no, not even on Tameh to Tameh, right? You're not allowed to, unless it's going to be of Demai, because since Demai is a Safek, because it belongs to an Amaretz, and therefore, we're not really sure whether he took off the, the Tumot Masort or not. There we were lenient. Okay, there we were lenient. But not in every single case. So answer the Gemara, you're right. We're talking about wine of the mind. And therefore, it's the same exact case. So therefore, you could be Torem, mina Tamea la Tameh. Because we're talking about the mind. Probably because right? the rabbis wanted people to be uh, exact. So Amar Mor, Mor says, Uve Shemen Yo Yase Ken. So to do with wine, you shouldn't do that, which means you shouldn't make trumot maaser on the rest of the, the of the barrels, right? Mipnev said the coin, but you're making the coin loaves. My shna, what's the difference? Shemen, right? The ra'uy lalik that it's fitting to light it. Yainami ra'uy leziluf. So to the wine is fitting for ziluf. The chiti, and are you going to tell me now ziluf la miltai that it's nothing, meaning it's not considered something important, and therefore the separating of the wine is considered a semrube, a great loss for the coin. Which means, shtia, for drinking, you could buy it cheap. But for ziluf, which is a greater benefit, you could take it even more expensive. So it comes out that ziluf is even a higher, meaning like the perfume type of thing that you're putting on the floor is a higher benefit than even drink. What's it, what are you telling me this for? So therefore, what we're trying to say is that if you're going to tell me now that oil... Because we said that oil that is going to waste, you're not allowed to do it. Why? Because you could light it. And therefore, it's considered a great loss. So he says, but wine is not a great loss. Because what are you going to do for the wine? You can't drink it because it was already tell me what we could do. You could pour it on the floor. So he said, but it's not a, it's not something important. Says the Gemara, what are you talking about? The wine is more important than even the drinking of the wine. So the answer is the Gemara, what are we dealing with? It's a new wine. New wine does not have a good smell. It has to be aged in order to have a good smell. So says the Gemara, right? He says one second, but you could let it become old. So answer the Gemara, to be take kala. If remember that, if you're going to leave it, so it, you could come to a mistake. You might drink it by accident. So you don't want to do that. So therefore, you, and then you're going to be eating, right? Trumat mea. So because of that we don't let you keep trumat mea, right? In order to let it become old, and then to you understand, we don't let you do those things. Okay. Shemen nami says the Gemara, one second, but oil also zimni. We said that you could use the oil. One second. It's also a takala, because maybe you could eat from it. So answers, no, you put it in a disgusting utensil. So you would only use it for fire, but you would never eat from it. Remember, you're allowed to use the oil of tumat me'ah for burning, but you cannot use it for eating. So here it's going to be different. So says, we're almost done. Also, why manach You could put the wine also in a disgusting utensil, so you'll never drink from it. And you could still use it for ziluf. And so the Gemara tells you, I don't understand. You want to use it for ziluf, and you're going to put it in a disgusting utensil? Obviously not. The takalat sma is a machloket tanaim. He says the Tanya will learn to write a chavit shaliyan truma. And it's made, but Shemai comes and he says, Tishafech hakol. You're going to spill the entire thing. Kuf tezayin mudalef. We're just going for two lines into uh, three, four lines into the into the two dots. It says Tishafech hakol. Bet Yilel says Tase ziluf. Just do ziluf. So I'm going to be Shemai, but Rabbi Yossi, Ani Achriya. I'm going to come and I'm going to tell you what's halacha in this machloket. Remember, ani achriya means that there's a machloket. Here there's a machloket between Bet Shemay and Bet Hillel. Can you pour out the entire thing or use it for ziluf? Right? The Bishwam Rebbe says, ani achriya. But buy it in the house, do ziluf. Basadeh, if it's going to be in the in the field, tishafech hakol. You're going to pour the entire thing out. The ika de amri and other people say, ben yashan, if it's going to be old, you could do ziluf. It's going to be chadash, pour out the entire thing. 
Amru lo, they told him, in achra shlishit machrat, which means this dat shlishit, which is a new svara, which is arguing on the other ones, cannot be machriya between the first ones. So to hear, since there's a machlok between Metile and Shamai, whether it's talking about in the Sader or whether it's going to be wine or like, you know, new or old, so therefore he comes and he says, you cannot be machriya between them. Nevertheless, the, we did learn that Betshamayim and Betilel, they did argue, do we koshesh for takala or not? And therefore it comes out that these are going to be like uh, the shita of Betshamayim.